Okay guys, today we're gonna to be talking about five knives that give me the fizz. Now, what do I mean by this fizz kind of factor? If you guys have been around YouTube for any length of time, you're probably familiar with Wrangler Star. And he talks extensively or quite a bit about this kind of fizz, this intrinsic value that you know makes you excited to either use, to own, to handle, to have a particular item. Now, for me, I really enjoy knives. And if you haven't uh, been able to tell, my channel channel is largely based around knives and wilderness living and you know in wilderness living you often use knives to uh, affect either survival or bushcraft camping hiking all of the above <laughs> Don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, check out the Instagrams. The support all really helps. Okay, let's jump into it. Okay, so I thought today, so I thought that I'd start off with the bushcrafting knives because Unarguably, the bushcrafting knives, aside from the EDC knife, give me the most excitement. I really love bushcrafting and camp knives, and part of that's because I really love bushcrafting and camping outdoors, and these knives are just so rad. So the first one for me has to be the JBK Layman. Now, JBK is a small custom knife maker, uh, and he makes some really spectacular pieces, and part of, or one of them, is the Layman, and that is what I have here. And this one, is in a vintage micarta kind of natural looking micarta and uh, it has barrel spacers it is just a really beautiful knife and on top of that it also has a tapered tang and overall the way that this knife feels in hand is so comfortable and the other thing to top that off is that it is a very nice very sharp and it's very nice and very um, agile if you will uh, blade to this really nice handle so not only is it super comfortable to hold but also really really well uh, really well crafted to use and you can tell whenever you're carving uh, skinning or doing really anything with this blade shape it is really really awesome and overall though it is a custom and it is not super cheap it is a really fantastic knife and really wouldn't be perfect for every wilderness situation, but if you have, you know, a solid hatchet, a solid saw, having something like this layman really goes well because it's going to be a very agile and very detailed uh, blade for doing fine work. And so really awesome knife. And it is, of course, full tang, pretty robust. I probably wouldn't baton, you know, heavy duty stuff with it because really it is a pretty small knife as a whole, but it is pretty fantastic. It can certainly strike ferro rods and run with the best of the best. Speaking of the best of the best, it would have to be the BRK Bushcrafter. Now the Bushcrafter, I've had several uh, over the past 10 years. This is of course one that I currently have and it is quite dirty, but it is CPM 3V and this is an OG or original BRK Bushcrafter. This one's in green canvas micarta and I love the Bushcrafter so much. It is one of my most carried blades I think out of any in my collection and it is because it fits my hand so well and I have done just so much bushcraft training camp life with this knife and uh, it just really suits me well and it's one of those knives that not only have I gotten a lot of experience with it but because it works for me so well because it works around me and just fits me really well I end up taking it over and over again it has the perfect thickness the perfect size perfect shape really and uh, it just it's really makes me excited to have and of course I definitely love it okay I don't talk about a lot of EDC knives but I thought since this is knives that just make me excited make me happy you know edc knives are kind of like the unsung heroes of the knife world because if you're like me you know you carry a knife every day and even though some of them aren't as exciting as others you know really like i said these knives get probably the most carry time in maybe not the most use time but certainly the most carry time in so really thinking about having you know a solid edc knife is really what it's all about if you are a knife nut or a knife addict and so this one in particular is a tiger stripe uh, strider sng and this little guy is just really really cool and once again just gives me the fizz because it is one a very well put together and very cool knife but it's just a very different blade too striders just look uh, very unique and i have a you know crk uh, sabenza i have a 
Rick Hinder, I have Hinder um, XM18, but having a Strider is just very different. And these knives are very kind of combat oriented, really tactical oriented, but uh, their execution is just in their own kind of world. They just do them. So really the uh, Strider SNG is a really cool blade. I've been wanting to add one to my carry for a long time or my collection I should say and so finally getting one has really given me the fizz to carry it and it is a really cool knife not to mention super super sharp and uh, this one is made out of S30V but they do make a wide variety of different steels and blade shapes I should say but uh, overall like I said this is a tiger stripe with the kind of a flame anodized titanium frame lock but really a sweet looking blade really a cool looking blade and just if nothing else it's just a classic strider SNG which it's hard to go wrong with with these blades and in my opinion I'm definitely not a fan of everything strider makes kind of similar to other knife companies but the SNG itself is really hard to hate if you're going to hate any of them because it just really is a good size and it's very carryable very carryable and it's very uh, utilitarian so overall that's the SNG from the Strider okay moving into survival blades as I feel like survival and bushcraft are kind of like the bread and butter of this channel of course it wouldn't be right to talk about knives that give you fizz without talking about the Pacific I won't spend too long in the Pacific because it does get a ton of airtime but also it is really one of those knives that is just it checks so many boxes for me it is super durable super tanky and super useful for me other people have said they don't like them but for me once again, similar to the BRK Bushcrafter, you know, it's not a perfect fit for everyone, but for me, the BRK Bushcrafter is like my go-to bushcrafting knife or camping knife, and the CRK Pacific is like my go-to survival knife. It just, it's what I choose, it's what I know. It's what I know and I have a lot of experience with it because I end up choosing it a lot to practice survival. And so it just really works for me and they are they are releasing new models of this. This one is in CPM S35VN. They are now releasing them in CPM 4V, which I think is really cool. Kind of wish I had one, but at the same time too, there's nothing wrong with my Pacific, so I'm not going to sell or, you know, uh, buy sell off this one or buy a new Pacific because realistically, this one just it works for me and uh yeah, I really can't complain about this blade. So I, I'm not going to get rid of it because it really is just a solid knife uh, overall. Okay, the next one, and I'm moving up in size, probably the largest of the knives, is the Hungulus 2 by uh, by Essie. Now, Essie as a whole is really just a fantastic knife company. They make a lot of cool blades, a lot of cool survival knives. I own a lot of them, everything from the, you know, uh, Zula 2 and SE3 all the way up to like the SE6, Hoogless 2. And of course I own a number of Ontario uh, Rat Series blades and uh, the Artac as well. So overall I have a lot of kind of uh, SE either designed or made blades in my collection and I really like a lot of them because they are no frills you know I mean this knife might look pretty cool but you know realistically speaking it doesn't really have any type of specialty to it you know it doesn't have any bells or whistles it's not really trying to be anything above and beyond what it is it's a purely useful tool and the Hoogless 2 is a little bit smaller than the normal Hoogless and I find that this size frame works really well for me and it's one of those things that if I'm trying to run like a one tool option kind of a scouting knife the uh, Hoogless 2 works really well for that size you know it's not something quite large enough that I start wanting to throw in a backpack all the time but at the same time too it is also large enough to handle itself do really good do a really good job at chopping batoning and uh, blazing trails so and that is really why I like the Hoogless 2 and why it excites me. It's, it's a really big blade and uh, it's not necessarily the largest out there, but it is really cool and very, very functional. Very, very functional. And not to mention, it does come in a pretty cool sheath. I think Essie really knocked it out of the ballpark with their Hoogless 2 and Hoogless sheaths. They are really quality Kydex uh, sheaths that have like a little adjustable bit 
for attention and uh, yeah they're just really built well they're designed to be carried and designed to be used and uh, really can't complain about any of that at all so that is the Hoogless 2 and why it gives me the fizz so to speak <laughs> of course I do own many other knives and I do like to carry other knives and play around with other knives it's just part of being a knife collector but these are some of the best knives or these are some of my favorite knives to carry and some of the knives that really uh, excite me at least at this current time frame so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed the video as always god bless and i'm out